This week we're going back to portrait painting anatomy and within this video I'll show you the techniques that I use to paint ears in my portraits. And this one is going to be a study and what a study means is basically an easier painting just done for practice. We'll be setting up drawing with a grid, using shields with transparent colors to set in the values, and finally applying some opaque paints on top just to show the difference between transparents and opaques. So let's get started with the first part which is going to be the drawing. I'll be painting this one on a gessoed panel that I set up myself. I purchased these panels on Amazon. I'll have a link for them down below. They're pretty inexpensive and they're just a very nice surface to paint on. All you need to do is add a few layers of gesso. So what I'm doing here is setting up a square grid on the left side of the canvas where I'm going to be painting. The grid sizes are going to be two by two. So every two inches I'm going to place a little mark on the left and right side of the canvas and then I'll just use my ruler to connect them. For the vertical lines of the grid, I'll do the same thing by placing a small mark every two inches on the top and bottom, and then I'll just use my ruler to connect them. And then once this is done, I have a two by two square grid set up and I can start the drawing. So what I did was take the photo reference, lay a one by one grid over it in Photoshop and print it out. You can see it on the right side of the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work from square to square, adding in all of the contour lines. Now this is going to be a study, so you're going to have to allow yourself to be messy with it. And what I mean by messy is that I'm not going to be concerned with any of my grid lines, sketch lines, or mistakes showing through in the final painting. I'm not going for any type of perfect painting or photorealism. I just want to get down the basic shapes of the ear. A study like this is much more of an exercise in seeing, you know, an observation rather than actual painting. So I set up the grid of my completed painting on the left side of the screen, so if you're going to be painting along with me, please feel free to use this as your reference. As I'm drawing this in, what I'm trying to do is just focus on one square at a time. I'm starting from the outside and working my way in, and what I like to do is I like to use each grid to look at the start and stop point of each one of these curves. So as I'm doing this, you'll be seeing me adding some small marks along the edges of each grid square. Those are basically reference points. And once I have those reference points in, I look at the reference and just follow the curve of each line that I see. And that way I just know where each curve is going to start and stop so that I can get my drawing in accurately. For drawing this in, I like to use a hard pencil, which is going to be very light. So I'm using a 4H here and I'm using very, very little pressure to draw this out. As I'm drawing with this, you'll notice that my hand is more toward the back of the pencil. That just allows me to use less pressure and keep these lines light. One way that I like to think about this is that I'm not trying to think about outlines. I'm just trying to think of where transitions, where values start and where they stop. If you draw or paint dark outlines around any part of a painting, it's going to flatten it. It's going to make it look like a cartoon. And that's the natural way that we'll draw or paint, just adding in outlines. You see that with kids all the time. But when you get a little bit more advanced, you'll start to realize that to render the effect that you're trying to see, it's much more about where values start and stop and the transitions between those. So even though right now, technically, yes, I am drawing in outlines, I'm not thinking of them like that. I'm much more thinking about this is where a shadow is going to be or this is where a highlight is going to start or stop. And if you're just starting out using a grid, it may feel a bit weird the first few times that you do it, but I promise you it gets so much easier with some practice. The more you do, the easier it becomes. And once all those lines are drawn in, what I like to do is use a kneaded eraser. This is a very soft eraser. It almost looks like a piece of Play-Doh or Silly Putty. And then I'll just work my way around the whole painting, just lightly going over this. This is just going to lift up some of that graphite to make these lines a little bit lighter. If you erase out too much, it's no big deal. You'll still be able to see those lines, so you could just redraw them in. And I'm also paying attention to those grid lines, just trying to erase those out more than the actual drawing. So now that's the first part done. We have the drawing in, nice and easy. Anybody can do this. So what we're going to do now is start adding some of the paint. We'll be starting out using transparent colors, painting in the shadows. I'm using a simple flesh tone that I mixed myself, which I'm placing up on the screen right now. And the paint that I'm using is Createx Illustration Colors, which are going to allow me to race into the paint for the first part of the painting. The first thing that I'm going to do with this flesh tone mixture is start adding in some of the darker shadows using a shield. Any type of airbrush shield is just fine for this. You could even make your own just cutting out some ripped pieces of paper. The one that I'm using here is a French curve made by Drew Blair School of Realism. I love these shields because they're standard French curves but they're made out of mylar so they're pliable. You can move them around the canvas very easily to paint in the shadows. 
This part of the ear is called the helix. It starts on the top and then just kind of works its way around the outside of the ear. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my shield to line up along the edge of the helix, starting on the right side, and then I'm spraying over to the left and down. This is just going to create some separation there and give us a shadow toward the left. I'll use the other edge of the shield to line up along the helix again, and this time I'm setting in the background. I'm spraying behind it. In an actual portrait, this is obviously where the hair is going to be. So as I spray this in, this just kind of pushes that in the background, making the part of the helix here, this part of the ear, look like it's sticking up toward us. Within the ear, you're going to kind of see a bump of some cartilage. This area is called the anti-helix. I'm lining up my shield with the right side of it, just spraying some paint below it to get in another one of those dark shadows. I'm using my shield to set in those sharp transition points between shadows and highlights, but once I get some of that in, you'll see what I'm doing now, just using the airbrush freehand and spraying over it, darkening up the whole area. Remember that this is a transparent paint, so if I spray over any of these lines, they're just going to get darker. So I'll go back to that helix using my shield, start spraying in that shadow as I work my way over to the left. As I work my way down, you'll also notice another dark cast shadow here being cast from the anti-helix. So again, I'll just line up a part of my shield and spray over to the left side where that shadow is going to be, creating that separation. So now that I have a few of those major reference points painted in, I'm going to go back to the airbrush freehand. And I'll just look at the reference photo and pay attention to where I see some darker and some lighter values, spraying some more paint in those darker areas. The goal of this is to do two things. The first is just to define those major macro values within the ear. The values in any painting are going to define the shapes, meaning the high points and the low points. So those areas that are brighter, the ones in highlights, are going to look like they're closer to us, while those shadows are just going to look like they're farther back. And this is what's going to create that illusion in any painting, making something look 3D on a two-dimensional surface like a canvas or a panel. And the second thing that I'm doing with freehand is just covering up that white gesso. I'm laying down a small glaze, a very thin layer of paint across the whole canvas, so I have something to erase into later. The next area that I want to get in is called the tregus. It's a small area to the right side of the ear of skin and cartilage. You'll notice that there's a very dark cast shadow over to the left of it. So I'll go right back over to the shield and just kind of move it around until I can find one part of the curve that fits my drawing. If the shield doesn't fit it perfectly, that's fine. You just want to find something that's good enough and then start spraying over to the left to start getting that really dark shadow in. I'll continue painting this in, working my way up, and right here I just went a little bit too far. I also noticed in the reference photo that there was a small shadow here, kind of like a crease on the upper part of the tregus. So even though I painted in what I saw, I didn't get it in accurately. There's a bit of a mistake right here on this area that I circled. But mistakes are a huge part of painting, they're also an important part, because they're teaching you observation skills. As I'm looking at this now, I'm noticing this definitely doesn't look right. I've painted probably thousands of ears in my lifetime, and this shadow increase clearly isn't right, so I'll adjust it later, but for now we're just going to keep on going. I'll sketch in a few lines and some shadows above and behind the ear, just to note that that's where the hair is going to be. I'm not going to be painting that, but sometimes it's nice just to give yourself some more reference points. To fill in the rest of this dark shadow, I'll use a different part of my shield, and you'll see that as I'm working this in, I'm just rotating the shield around. I'm not trying to spray it all in in one shot, I just want to get the shield to line up with a few curves, spray it in, and then move it again to get a transition curve all the way around. Once those lines are in, I sprayed it in freehand, and then I'll use my shield to spray in the left side of the ear, just where the hair is going to be behind it. And again, that darker shadow is going to push that part of the head where the hair is into the background. This is going to make the ear look lighter, so those highlights are going to make it look like the ear is closer to us than the background. And then I'll just use the airbrush freehand again and start spraying in some of the shadows that I see within the earlobe. And at this point, this ear is basically done. It took no more than 10 minutes to draw and paint in. So if you're just practicing and working on a study like this to learn the basics, this is a pretty good place to stop. What I'd recommend doing is find another photo reference, maybe with the ear at a slightly different angle, and then try it again. Set up a new grid, sketch it out, and then paint it in again using a single color. The nice thing about working on a monochrome painting or a grisaille, you know, something that's one color, is that you're really just focusing in on drawing, adding in the lights and darks where you see them. And for painting, that's going to get you like 95% of the way there for anything that you want to paint. But if you want to go a little bit farther, try out some different techniques like erasing or opaques, I'll show you what to do next. I'll start moving away from the reference photo, still using it as a guide, but I'm going to 
play around with a few things. I'm going to make the ear a little bit darker, like a darker complexion. And I'm also going to be adding in a good amount of texture. So I'll use my eraser here not only to add texture, but also to start pulling out some highlights. As I erase out, I can start changing the shape of things. If a shadow is in the wrong area, I can kind of just slightly move it or nudge it in a different direction by erasing. And also I could start working on the contrast by erasing into the highlights, making them brighter, and then eventually spraying some darker paint into the shadows. And if you're just starting with the eraser, allow yourself to be messy here. You could use hatching or cross hatching techniques. For this one, the goal of erasing is not to add a very accurate looking skin texture, but just to pull out highlights to make some areas in the light look a little bit brighter like light is reflecting off of them of course it's going to be adding texture too because you're scratching into the paint so try to have some fun with it you know you don't have to erase out in small circular motions if you'd like you could use all hatching where you just erase out a bunch of thin parallel lines i'll rework some of these dark shadows using both freehand and shields spraying in some sepia to help darken it up and cool down the color temperature but you don't have to follow that. This is a great time to experiment, try out different colors. If you'd like, you could try using the color black. That'll work very well. You just have to be careful with it because it gets dark very quickly. Or you could even try some higher chroma colors like some violet or some blue, spraying it into these shadows just to add a bit of saturation into them. And that's what makes a study so fun because this painting is for no one else but yourself. It's about trying all different types of techniques and experimenting. You may find a few things that you love. You could add to a future painting, add to your bag of tricks. And you're also going to find a lot of things that you don't like about the painting. And that's equally important because at the end of the day, it's all about learning and trying to improve as a painter. So at this point, you can see that I used a lot of erasing to pull out highlights, adding texture, and also bumped up the contrast by spraying sepia, darkening up those shadows. And I think at this point, this works very well as a study because it's a bit messy, but it's showing the values that I want. And it kind of looks more like a sketch or a pastel drawing than an airbrush painting. And this is just my opinion, but there's something about this I like where it doesn't look like a painting anymore and definitely doesn't look like an airbrush painting. It's just kind of showing the marks of the eraser and giving off a bit of a grungy look. But now let's say you don't like that look and that's not what you want in your painting. The two very common ways to avoid that is one, to obviously not use the eraser, not add any of those scratch marks, but the second is to use a lighter opaque paint to kind of blend everything smooth. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using the color Opaque White by Createx Illustration, and I added a very small amount of orange into it. The purpose of adding the orange is just to help kind of mitigate some of that blue shift. It really doesn't do that much. You'll see as I continue painting this. So what I'm doing with this opaque white is that I'm spraying it into the areas just like I did with the eraser. Spraying any area that I want to look brighter. You'll notice that dramatic color shift. That's a blue shift from using a whiter paint. I could use that flesh tone color to spray over it, but you can see it really doesn't do that much. There's still a pretty dramatic color shift in between the areas that are erased out and the areas that are sprayed in with white paint. We'll come back to address that later, but for now I'm going to go right back to this white paint and use it just like I did the eraser. Instead of erasing out paint for highlights, what I'm doing here is adding the highlights in with the opaque paint. And you can still get some texture here, but with the airbrush, everything is going to be a lot softer and you're not going to have that erasing texture. So a way to fix this is use the color orange right out of the bottle and lightly spray it over any of the areas with the blue shift. Orange is the complementary color to blue, so it's going to just help tame down some of that blue color. So let me go back to that lighter opaque paint, spray it over the entire ear just to lighten up areas that I want to be brighter. This way we have the blue shift across the entire ear and the way I'm going to fix it is go right back over to the color orange and start spraying it, glazing it right over the top. You need to go slowly with this, but you'll see that that orange just really starts to tame everything down. And the more of the color orange that I spray, the less of a blue shift we're going to get. Now, I only spent a few minutes with the color orange, but you can see the effect that you can get. Everything is much softer and you don't have that texture. And if you spend a bit more time using the color orange and the flesh tone, reworking areas that still have a bit of a blue shift, you can clean this up to where it's almost perfect. And this is what the final study looks like. It's a quick little painting, shouldn't take you any longer than 10 to 15 minutes, even if you're going through transparents and opaques. But of course, the more time that you spend on it, the better you can get it to look. So that's it for this week's video. Just a simple little painting. If you're interested in more advanced stuff, we're going to be doing that within the next few weeks. And like always, I want to say thank you so much for the generous support of the channel members. I'd like to welcome the newest member, Sharkin, this week. Thank you so much for joining and welcome. And Leon, thank you so much for rejoining. I appreciate it. And so that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you back here next Friday.